Guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. You know, PRS instruments sometimes get written off by a lot of players as dentist guitars. And if you're not familiar with the term, it's one that's been popping up a lot more recently. You know, too pretty to be played. Better suited to spending most of its time hanging on the walls of a medical professional's office, where it sometimes might be taken down for a quick blues lick or two. I've always seen this as an unfair evaluation. Yes, they are pretty, especially when you get up to the wood library private stock stuff, but PRS guitars are meant to be played. Now, I do get the point though. Most of PRS's lineup does have that classy, bluesy vibe. This one though, look at it. This is a metal guitar. The question though is, does this quote unquote dentist guitar chug as hard as it looks it does. I've been dying to try one of these forever, so let's take a closer look. Man, so huge thanks to Gene and PRS for lending me this guitar and for sponsoring the video. Now, let me explain a little bit about why I'm so excited to try this one. Besides the obvious, I mean, again, look at this thing, it's fucking incredible. So Dusty Waring is, of course, known for his work with Prog Metal Royalty Group, between the buried and me. And this is actually the third iteration of Dusty Waring's collaboration with Paul Reed Smith and the second as part of the Bolton CE line. This is the PRS DW CE24 Floyd, the 2021 variation. Mahogany body, maple top with the CE style beveled carve, maple neck with a modified pattern thin neck, and a maple fingerboard with blackbird inlays. PRS low mass lock and tuners, Floyd Rose 1000, and Dusty wearing signature Mojo Tone Tomahawk Gen 2 humbuckers. The Floyd Rose 1000 is a surprising spec choice, and we'll come back to that later. The model comes in a variety of colors, the original wearing burst, my favorite faded blue smoke burst, that's this one, gray black, burnt amber smoke burst, and black top. For this year, they've added jade smoke burst to the lineup, which looks ridiculously sick, especially with the black outline bird inlays. They've also dropped a limited hardtail run in all the same colors, and all with the outline inlays. Like, my god, it is impossible to have a bad looking variation of this guitar. Now, the CE series is made in the USA, and the immediate standout feature that separates them from PRS's other American series, the Cores, the S2s, is the bolt-on maple neck. Less noticeable is that compared to the other two made in Maryland series, it's also got a different carved top that's kind of in the middle. It's got deeper, more rounded bevels compared to an S2, and it's not as round in the middle compared to a core. The CEs were first launched in 1988, almost as a more affordable alternative to the set neck cores. Back then, they even had alder bodies for a while because, well, that's a classic combination with a bolt-on neck. But they ended up gaining a following of their own because of how snappy they felt compared to a normal set neck PRS. So this is a lot of firsts for me. It's my first CE ever. I've been dying to try this one in particular because I love PRS, I love metal. I've never tried Mojo Tone parts before. On paper, this is the perfect PRS for me. And it looks incredible. It's one of PRS's coolest ever looking models, and that's saying something. So that's the background on this thing. And I found the best way to really test a guitar is to use it to write something. See if it's an inspiring riff machine. So let's plug it in, get some tones, get some first impressions, and see if it inspires a cool demo track. Fuck, man, this top is nasty. Oh, it's so nice. I couldn't help myself. I shot all the B-roll before I even plugged it in. I mean, I get it, right? On a $2,800 guitar, you should be putting an original Floyd Rose on here, but I genuinely don't understand why people talk so much about the 1000 series. It's not fucking trash. It, Floyd Rose is just fine. And really, Goto makes the best Floyd anyways, so. Now that I've started a shitstorm in the comments, let's find a demo track. Okay, so between the buried and me, they are a poster child for modern prog. You know, the songs are super intricate, the riffs are super technical, the song structure is crazy. I mean, they are prog to their core. And for this demo track, I'm gonna do absolutely none of that. <laughs> Usually for something like this, I'll try to write something in the general style of the artist. Between the Buried and Me's music is too musician-y <laughs> for my Ooga Booga chug brain. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go for something Ooga Booga-y, but with a little bit of prog flavor, if you will. I don't know exactly how that's going to work yet. I'm sure I'll figure it out. This is 
the first time I've tried Mojo Tone pickups. This is a hot humbucker. That's a lot of output. Now, something I've noticed about prog is a lot of it sounds very stop starty, and a lot of the time that has to do with the 7 8 time signature. And compared to 4 4, the butt rock standard, that's generally not a natural time signature to count. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Or we can just fake it and write a stop starty riff in 4 4. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. Okay, so we can use that picking pattern and just kind of nomad over the fingerboard. Now let's go, intro riff sorted. The fingerboard edges aren't super, super rolled. It's like you don't have a lot of fingerboard material kind of fallen off the edge. You've still got all of the fingerboard material left, but at the end, it's got this nice curved edge and it feels awesome. PRS needs to do more maple fingerboards with the Blackbird inlays. These are so, so cool. US made PRS guitars are so nice. And this particular one, even compared to the S2, feels more alive. That might have something to do with the satin finish. Um, especially the open pour feel on the back. It's so nice. I always prefer satin finishes because the guitar feels more connected to you as a player. Does that make sense or is that to what my mom would call frou-frou? Like this guitar and me in this moment, we're one spirit, bro. Anyways. <laughs> okay, so continuing on the stop-start theme. I like that riff, then we can just walk it down the fingerboard. And then the harmony. Yeah. All right, I swear, it's gonna sound good when I put it all together with the drums. And then I'm feeling a big, hard-hitting octave riff. <laughs> There's something here, I'm gonna find it. Harmony to that would be. <laughs> All right, that works. Also, these oversized knobs, I love them. Put some of these fuckers on your SGs, that will solve the neck dive. No, but they're actually very easy to adjust, and because the circumference is so massive, it's a lower gear ratio, so you've got more control over your adjustments. They look hilarious, but they're actually very, very useful. All right, now's a good time to try out the coil splits. <laughs> Ooh, and neck pickup. It's pretty nice. Dude, the Mojoton parts on this are actually pretty sick. Even something as small as the switch tip. The switch tip is perpendicular to the actual switch, which makes it super easy to grab onto and adjust. Love it. You know what? Ever since I tried that 27 fret Ibanez, I've been obsessed with tapping. So let's see. Nice. And then, uh... Perfect. I actually like that a lot. Are we done? I was kind of hoping to drag this out. That way I don't have to send this guitar back for as long as possible. But I think that's enough ideas. I can go and work on this demo track off camera. And I'll meet you back here after for some final thoughts on this PRS DWCE24 Floyd. First, here's how the demo track with the first riffs inspired by this guitar turned out. <laughs>
demo a lot of phenomenal guitars on the channel. And once in a while, a guitar comes along where I'm legitimately sad when the video is done because that means the brand is going to want it back. And this is one of those guitars. Apart from my PRS 10 top Tremonti, which is like a couple thousand dollars more expensive, this is my favorite PRS ever. It's actually one of my favorite double cut metal guitars I've had the pleasure of making a video on, actually. Let's talk about PRS as a whole for a second. When I saw Mark Tremonti playing them, when I saw Wes Borland playing them, I was initially drawn to PRS guitars because of how they look. And that tends to be the case with a lot of guitar players. We see a guitar that looks cool and we want to try it. I mean, even the affordable SEs are eye-catching. And when you get to the American guitars, they make playable art. The tops, the colors, the handwritten serials on the back of the headstock, love that. It adds a human touch. You know, like compared to a stamp, this is more personal, like someone dedicated to the craft literally signed off on this guitar. PRS is great at utilizing the advantage of being the relative youngest of the big three American guitar brands. Not only were they able to analyze the limitations of the older traditional guitars, they aren't restrictively bound to their history. Whereas other brands fans get mad if they don't stick to the same designs of the 50s and the 60s, PRS is free to tinker, to improve, to evolve, and they do all the time. Paul Reed Smith himself has a reputation for being almost obsessive about the minutia, and I mean that in the most endearing of ways. He's like your guitar crazy uncle, always looking at every little detail about guitars and looking for ways to improve them. To be honest, it sounds like overkill. It probably is overkill, but the end result is the company's been around for almost 40 years and they're releasing things that have the quote unquote PRS DNA and still feel fresh. Rather than stagnate or reissue the past, you expect PRS to evolve. Basically, that whole spiel is an appreciation for how PRS approaches the craft. And that brings us back to this fresh take on the PRS CE formula. <laughs> Obviously, it looks incredible. I mean, this combination of a satin flame top and a maple fingerboard with black inlays is one PRS needs to use more often. It's a little more understated than the majority of PRS's lineup, while still having that unmistakable PRS class. The fretwork, the fingerboard edges, awesome. Listen, quality and consistency is not an issue anyone brings up with American PRS guitars. Spec preferences aside, these don't fight you. <laughs> say for me the make or break feature of the guitar is the neck now PRS has listed the neck shape as dusty wearing why not gonna lie it's kind of annoying when companies do that like how is that at all helpful for buyers who aren't able to try this beforehand or when they're like oh it's a slightly modified version of this other profile like modified how I'm sorry PRS is getting the brunt of this mini rant but it's not just PRS anyways essentially it's a slightly thinner pattern thin profile so it's thin but not ridiculously thin rounds not a lot of shoulder the neck is super comfortable and I love how snappy it is I get now what people are talking about with the snappiness of CEs it's just so responsive the note just seem to pop out of it. Again, the results of the bolt-on maple neck and maple fingerboard. As much as I love my core Tremonti, and I do adore that guitar, with the set mahogany neck and rosewood board, I was really missing the snappy response of the DW when I AB'd the two. <laughs>
obviously already touched on the control knobs and the switch tip. Might have to swap those parts into some of my other guitars. The only thing I don't like is the trem. Not because the Floyd Rose 1000 is bad, I just personally don't like floating tremolos. So it's awesome they released the hardtail version this year, right after I'd gotten this one a demo. And judging by the internet's reaction, like finally there's a non-Floyd version, I have a sneaking suspicion it'll become part of the mainstay lineup in some form. And in fact, let's clear this up. The Floyd Rose 1000 is a very good tremolo. According to Floyd Rose themselves, it's the exact same specs as the German-made original Floyd Rose, only difference is it's made in South Korea. And these guitars are the ones that Dusty Waring uses with Between the Bear to Me on tour and in the studio for his job. He would not be using these specs if it weren't reliable. That being said, I do get where the Floyd fans are coming from. This is a $2,800 American made guitar. It would make sense to have the highest level hardware too, which would of course be Goto because they make the best Floyds anyways. The weird thing is the 2015 set neck Dusty Waring signature, in addition to having an ebony board and his then signature DiMarzios also had an original Floyd Rose. It could be he just preferred the screw and trem bar. You know, I'm not the most seasoned Floyd Rose user, but I didn't run into any issues. Tuning stability was fine guitar didn't explode, the 1000 Floyd rose just fine. It is a shame though, and I've seen this already in your comments when I posted teasers to Facebook and to Insta, that the price tag limits the accessibility of one of PRS's sickest guitars to a lot of players. How has there not been an SE version of this yet? It seems like a no-brainer. But that is an issue for another time. The TLDR is, especially if you're a rock or metal player in the market for your next high-end guitar, this should be high up on your radar. It's easily one of their coolest production guitars that they make, and because of the snappiness, you could even argue that it's the best. So those are just some of my thoughts on Dusty Waring's PRS signature. Here's where I'll throw it to you. What do you think of the PRS CEDW24? That's almost an Ibanez name. Massive shout out to my awesome patrons. Their names are on the screen right now. Consider joining them or as a YouTube member or picking up some merch. All those are great ways to support the channel if you enjoy what I do. Well, I guess my time with this guitar has sadly come to an end. I am going to miss this thing. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I will see you for the next video.